Hello everybody. So what I'm going to do today, my name is Lori DeMike. If you don't know who I am, I live in Weeping Water, Nebraska, and I love to do all things food related. I normally do Facebook lives, but today I decided I was going to try to make a keto bread that actually has less than two carbs per slice. And, um, it just takes too long. I can't do it on a live video. So I decided to give it a shot, um, making a video and then I'm going to upload it to YouTube. So we're going to see how this turns out. If you don't know me, I am not fancy. I never will be. That's just not how I roll. And most people who know me like that about me. So anyway, um, I am not a professional. I, although I did cook for uh, 20, 30 years, um, I have lupus, so I stay home and I work from my home. And um, I have a couple of Facebook groups that are pretty large. I have one that's called hashtag Chaffle Ho, which is all about low carb bread. And I have one that is called um, Real Life, Real Food, Real Health. And that one just really kind of covers a whole gamut of my health journey and trying to be healthier. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna take one cup of warm water, not hot, because it'll kill the yeast, and yes, there is yeast in here. And I'm gonna put it in this bowl, and this bowl has one teaspoon, one teaspoon of sugar. Do not panic, the yeast will eat the sugar. It's not going to be the end of the world and there will be no carbs present from that, okay? I promise. I promise. It's cool. All right. And now I'm going to put in here four teaspoons of instant yeast, which is really about the equivalent of two packages of yeast. If you have, if you have the packages, just two packages of the rapid rice, um, you can do that as well. Okay. I always swear that I'm going to be completely organized and it just doesn't all right, so I'm gonna stir this up really good to activate the yeast, and the sugar will activate the yeast. If you don't want to use sugar, you can use inulin, which is, um, it's basically like a prebiotic fiber, and it has a little bit of sweetness to it, that enough that it will activate the yeast, but um, I didn't have it. So I'm using the sugar and really I know that the the um, yeast will be activated by the sugar and I know that the yeast will eat the sugar so why not go with what you know. Yeah, just saying. Okay. Nebraska is pretty cold this time of year. Not gonna lie. I'm gonna hope that that rises fairly quickly but I'm making no guarantees. Okay. So the next thing that we're gonna do is I am going to um, measure out what I'm using for flour. Okay. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Oops. Let me grab my other measuring cup. Sorry guys. I guess I can edit this out, right? If I do a YouTube video, you guys might want to see some of my bloopers though. Okay. So I have a half a cup here. So what I'm going to put in this bowl right here, is I'm gonna put a half a cup of oat fiber. Oat fiber is not the same as oat flour. It's strictly the fiber. I bought this at Hy-Vee, has uh, zero carbs. It's got three carbs, three carbs, and three grams of fiber, so it's zero carbs. And this really get, helps you with the structure of the bread. Um, there are some flours that have this in it, like the Trim Healthy Mama, their baking blend has it in there. And it's just, it's really awesome. It just gives you a structure of flour. Okay, so I'm gonna put a half a cup of that. And yeah, it does put off a little dust cloud there, in case you haven't seen that. All right, so we have a half a cup of oat fiber. And then I'm going to put in two-thirds cup of golden flax meal. Sorry, guys. And I just buy this at my local Walmart. 
Flax meal gives it that kind of whole wheat flavor and gives it a little bit of structure too. You can use psyllium husk, but I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just use what I've got today. Okay, and this is what makes our bread not gluten-free, all right? But still keto. Vital wheat gluten is actually just the protein that's found in wheat. It has zero carb effect. Absolutely zero carb effect. All right. So for this, we're gonna put one and a quarter cup in here. That's a half. That's one. And no, I'm not gonna be super precise. So I'm gonna say that's one and a quarter cup. I know, does that freak you out? Does it freak you out that I'm not super precise? Some people, it really truly does. But for me, not so much, okay? All right. I'll get to check my editing skills. I'll get to check my editing skills on this. So I'm just gonna stir those ingredients up together. It's very flowery. I need to find my xanthan gum. Gluten-free xanthan gum. This also helps with the structure and all I need of this is just like a quarter of a teaspoon and that's not a quarter of a teaspoon. Basically, it's just kind of a really healthy pinch, okay? And we're just gonna put that in there. Maybe a little more. I'm gonna throw the rest away. Okay, so this is our flour mixture right here. Can you see that? It looks like flour, right? All right, so we have that. And then I'm going to do five tablespoons of butter cubed. In theory, it's cubed. Let's see my messy refrigerator. I've been out of town. Oh, good, you can't see it. <laughs> anyway, I use Kerrygold. So I'm going to take five tablespoons of this. Our yeast is rise, our yeast is proofing really, really well over here. All right. I am going to take five tablespoons. I promise you that my videos will get a lot better as I go on, but for right now, this one just kind of was a, a spur of the moment thing, you know? I just needed to do it, so. Okay. So I'm gonna take five tablespoons butter. I'm just gonna cube it really well. And then I am going to take two eggs, which really should be at room temperature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soak them with some warm water right here. Again, I was not prepared. No fancy here, this is not fancy. I just do what I do, you know? And yeah, oh, oh wait, my hair is hanging in my face. I have had people complain about that, but here's the deal. I'm the one eating this. So if it's my hair, and I mean, I know you should have your hair pulled back, but I just got my hair cut, so it's harder to pull back. So I'm not gonna do it, so I'm not really worried about it. Not at all. All right, so usually I would bring these to room temperature, and I'm just putting them under hot water a little bit right here to bring that to, and I'm going to crack them in with my flour mixture. Two large eggs. 
and then I'm going to throw my butter in here. And then I'm going to put a pinch of salt in there. I prefer Himalayan, but I don't know where it is right now. This is what happens when I go out of town. My husband pulls out the white salt. Anyway, okay. And then this is our yeast mixture. See how that's bubbled up really well? And just stir it again. I love the smell of yeast when it's all proofed. And then I'm gonna put this in here with our flour mixture and eggs and butter. And then I'm gonna take my handy dandy dough hook and I am gonna have it do the work for me. Once you get to this point, it's really just a matter of getting the dough at the right consistency. And then we're gonna proof the dough till it rises up nice and high. And then we're gonna bake it. But I'll let you see what this looks like. <clears throat> I'm going to spray this. I'm not going to put parchment in it. I'm going to just spray it. <coughs> I'm probably going to regret that. Actually, I know I'm going to regret that. So I think I will put parchment in it. <coughs> Change my mind. I'm putting parchment in it because I want to be able to pull it out from the oven so it can cool on a cooling rack. And sometimes when you cook with some of the um, gluten-free flours and the um, xanthan gum, things tend to stick a little bit more. So, all right, I'm gonna take this and I am going to scrape. It smells really good. My hope is that this is actually gonna be my, my go-to bread. I would like to do stuffing and I'm hoping that this is um, this is gonna work for me. I have, I have had some of the low carb breads in um, the grocery store. Sola has a really good brand. Um, they're very tiny slices and they're three carbs per slice. So six carbs a sandwich if you're doing actually if you're doing keto that kind of really knocks you out of the park so my goal is to have this work it's supposed to be larger slices but only two carbs between one and two carbs per slice if you get the 20 slices out of it patience is never my strong suit so i tend to just jack things up a little bit my goal right now is just to get this where it's it's a bread consistency and then go from there. It really needs to need, I think, probably at least three minutes. It's actually pretty, it's pretty much a bread consistency. Gosh, it smells so good. I really, really am excited about this. Like, it smells like amazing like bread not like chocolates like bread sorry about the lighting too it's just one of those days you know had to go get a shot in my knee this morning I think probably if my butter would had been a little bit more room temperature I wouldn't have some of these issues either Okay, so I'm going to let that go for three minutes. Okay, so it's been about three minutes. The only thing I did, because I tasted the dough, 
is I added two teaspoons of the Lakanto monk fruit sweetener, mostly because I like bread that's sweet. Yeah, I'm a bit of a carb addict that way, but no carbs there. And this looks pretty good. Little sticky, which is okay. Very much like bread. Okay. Mm. Tastes like bread. All right, now let's just see if it rises. What I did is I put a cup of boiling water, or I put a cup of water in the microwave and boiled it for a minute and a half. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to put my dough in my pan. There's my pan. And I'm going to let that rise until it's doubled in size. My guess is it's going to be about a half hour. We'll see. Just kind of shape it down into the pan just so it fills in the gaps a little bit. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I just hope it works. If it doesn't, you'll never see this video. If it does, you will. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in the microwave and I'm gonna let it go till it rises. I'll let you know how long that takes. It is cold here, so it might take longer here. Anyway, and I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see that that has risen more than half, more than twice. So I am going to put it in the oven and it's supposed, it took exactly 43 minutes to rise that much. And what I did is I set my oven to 350 and I opened the door because it's freaking freezing here. So I am going to now put this in the oven and then as soon as it's done baking, I will come back and show you the finished results. It's supposed to bake for 35 to 45 minutes, but I'll let you know. Be right back. So there it is. It kind of fell a little bit in the middle, which I don't care. If it tastes like real bread, I'm totally fine with that. So I don't know if I rose too much or if I didn't do it rounded enough, but like I said, I am not a perfectionist. Not even close. So if this tastes good, I say we have a winner. Once it cools, I'll cut it, toast a piece, and I'll let you see what it looks like. Okay. So remember what I said about patience not being my, my strong suit? I decided I'm not gonna let the bread cool. I'm just gonna cut it, because I, I wanna see what it looks like. Mm. See the steam? Looks like bread. Let's see what it tastes like. Hmm. It tastes pretty good. I would say you definitely could make stuffing out of this and it will make a really good fried egg sandwich. I like it. It's tasty. Okay. I'm going to post the recipe. Practice on editing my video. And then I'll put it on YouTube. Thanks for putting up with me. It's really good with sugar-free jam on it, too. Just saying.